Yo, what's up guys? It's Trazel. So today I got for you guys a tutorial about kind of just how to make a good faction server, server in general. All the commands that go into it, like what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, I think I've had a lot of people ask, like, what do I do in my server? How I, what commands I put in there, how I make it all do everything. It's pretty cool. Um, I'll show you guys how to make a factions. How to make all the commands in here work. A couple other random cool things. And yeah, uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing in any server, obviously, you have to make the spawn. Usually in on any server, when you first get into the world, you want to make a big impression, and this is where you first start my world. Now normally, um, you start in here, and you kind of, how I kind of have it set up, is you just kind of see all this, you see outside, and you're like, whoa, that's kind of cool, take this to enter, and yeah. And then it gives you a couple things, some starter loot. Always give people starter loot. But yeah, just make sure your your spawn looks really pretty. Make sure it's just very attractive to attract a lot of people that come into the world and are very impressed by it. Not too big so that it's overwhelming. Just enough so that it looks nice. So obviously another aspect of any server would be shops and currency and like the economy for a faction server definitely want to include almost every type of thing you can buy in the game in your shops like anything from armor you want to include some kits maybe and you also want to make sure that you know what kind of currency you're using there's three main types of currency that I know of that I can think of and that would be number one a physical currency like maybe have a currency that people can't obtain, like a end crystal that I can't find, or maybe a nether star. There's one. There's something like these that you know something they can't get in survival, or a nether star that's very hard to get in survival. And um, use that as your currency for people to use as to buy and sell things. Number two, what I use in my server, which would be a virtual currency like a scoreboard, where it adds you to a scoreboard and stuff like that I can have a tutorial later on how to do that but um then the third one would be something like like an experience like an XP kind of thing where your XP is your money and now it's a great way to do it I don't typically like it because whenever you die you lose it you lose your experience it goes back to zero and that means you lost all your money so Usually that's the main reason I don't do experience as a currency, but you know if it's what you like It definitely has its advantages. For example, you can earn money by just killing mobs and doing random stuff because you, you earn experience from mining and killing mobs in the normal game so that can be an advantage to that but Yeah, just stuff like that and also about the economy which would be another aspect of the whole money system what I mean by economy is just having the whole thing balanced, Make sure, making sure nothing's overpowered, overpriced, underpriced, there's no exploits, and by that I mean like there's nothing that people can like use to like get fast money or cheat, it's all balanced. Now something I could show you as an example is maybe this redstone could sell for maybe $50 compared to 16 what it is now. Now what that would do is instead of people going around getting a bunch of iron which sells for eight dollars each they just they just sell redstone they would never want to sell iron because why would you sell red iron when you could sell redstone for so much more you just gotta have that balance in the economy so that it keeps everything even so that there's no like exploits and no outliers in the whole currency system because then there's no point in buying certain things when there's only one thing that's good to get. So next, um, obviously this is mainly a faction server, so I'm going to show you how to make 
a nice factions. So what I do in this server is I have the faction spawn separate from the main spawn. So you go to main spawn, buy your stuff, get everything you need, then you come here and you can't go out right away. You have to press this button. The reason I do that is because it prevents people from spawn camping players. Because if you just jumped off, first of all, people could just hit you off and kill you. Second of all, people could just be standing down there waiting for you to jump off and then kill you. That's pretty bad. So what I do here is I press a button. Then what it does is it teleports you to a random llama out there. And I have spawners for llamas so that it spawns llamas constantly. So that when you push the button, you have no idea where you're going to spawn. So you spawn to a random llama. There's no way people can spawn camp you because they don't know where you're going to come out. And it's pretty safe, I'd say. I've not had an issue with spawn camping since, at least for that aspect. Yeah, that's mainly how the faction spawn would work, besides, you know, the commands. Just build something in the middle, make sure it's protected, I'll show you that in a second, and then... Yeah, just kind of, I'd recommend having those buttons that teleports you to a random llama or whatever you want to do so that it prevents people from being able to spawn camp you. Uh, so next, I'm going to show you guys a lot of the necessary commands for a world. Any world to make it protected so that people can't grief it. And after that, I'll show you the factions commands. And then after that, I'll show you some fun commands you can have in your server to kind of make it unique. Make it attractive for other players so that when they join your world, they kind of want to stay. It's not just basic like every other world. For any server in general, would need these commands. And I have these as tour spot effects because I have a thing called zones in my world. We can explore them and find loot and they're protected as well. So I just have it all in the same thing. First one, put everybody in an adventure. Have it for a range. Obviously I have the range to a thousand. So that anybody within a thousand blocks of spawn are put in an adventure. They can't grieve the map place TNT break blocks or whatever that's they're not gonna get close even close to spawn before doing anything and if you're gonna have factions make sure the factions map does not touch this radius make sure it's outside of the radius so that you don't interfere with factions I'd recommend putting factions far away so that you don't have an issue with spawn and factions now these are effects I do when you're in the area I do the same spot so what I do is I have it affect at all players in adventure mode m equals a from these coordinates negative 135 74 138 and a range of a thousand that's gonna be the same for all of these and it gives them weakness for two seconds max weakness 255 and true now, if you don't know what that means i recommend you look it up because it's pretty simple it just gives you weakness for two seconds power 255 which is the max for a bedrock edition and then true means you don't get the bubbles, which no one likes the bubbles. Next one is the same thing, but it's fire resistance. And the other one's saturation, so you don't get hungry. And resistance. And the reason why you do this, weakness, so you can't hit other players when you're in spawn and troll them. Fire resistance and resistance, so you don't die. So like when you're jumping down from a high place, you don't just take fall damage and die. And that would really make people mad if they just died for no reason saturation so you don't die of hunger don't have to worry about that in spawn and this one oh it's another one it's instant health so if you somehow take damage it's literally impossible for you to die in here so these are my banned items so if you want to ban items in your server this is what you do for me I have observers banned and you want to do M equals not C right here so that people in creative aka admins and whatever other ranks you have can contain those items to use them for building and stuff this right here is a thing I did to prevent people from making nether portals in factions because I don't want people making nether portals the main reason I do that is because what would happen is people would go into their nether portal they'd exit it and they'd come out in another nether portal that's in someone else's base and then what I do is I execute at all people in survival because you're in survival in factions and it detects at your position if there's a portal in 
this is the title ID. So what the title ID basically for the portal is the, the fa way it's facing. You know, like if it's facing this way or this way, you know, that's a different title ID. So an anvil would probably have two different title IDs. I don't know what the exact number is. Portals have four. One, two, three, you yeah. know, you get the point. This, I kill all ender pearls because people like to glitch out of the barriers and stuff and it's just not necessary. You can use it in factions, I just prevent it from happening in spawn. Kill creepers. You could just do this one. All the other ones are for my mods. Skeleton creeper and stuff like that. But this one, obviously because if at night creepers can spawn and people can just let them blow up. Yeah. So I think that's all the necessary commands that you'd probably want to have in a main ser in your server. Just things that give people effects. Permanent adventure. Clear things from their inventory, specific things like that are banned. Kill creepers, kill ender pearls. There's all the stuff that I just showed you. Okay, now we're back in faction spawn. And it's pretty much the same thing down here. Kill creepers. All the effects. And then it's a little bit different. Be more at everybody. Kill arrows. I did that so that people can't like shoot each other with bows in here. I did not do it in main spawn because I have dungeons and I want skeletons and other things to be able to shoot you. Because if I did kill arrows, the skeletons would be able to hit you with their arrows. Set spawn. And this is leather because the llamas drop leather, I think. And people could just farm that. This just clones this chest, which is the chest full of tokens you can use. I call them tokens. Just things you drop on the ground to use. But yeah, it's pretty simple. Now I'm going to show you guys all the cool, the cool fun commands you could use to make your server really cool and unique. Okay, so I have here a few tokens. I call them tokens. I just, that's just why I decided to name them. But each of them do a specific thing. And the commands for them are right here. So, this is the factions token. When I drop it straight down, it'll TP me to factions, which is the faction spawn I showed you a few times. Now, the command for it is it executes at all entities, type equals item, name equals factions. Now, that thing would be this thing I'm holding in my hand. And now, after that, it executes at the closest person to that item within one block radius, just in case there's one that dropped and it's like not near anybody it won't teleport random people then it tps them to faction spawn so if that item is on the ground it would teleport the closest person to it to this coordinate like so now we're at faction spawn same thing as for the spawn teleport you to spawn and don't i forgot to mention the one after it it kills at e name equals spawn so that it doesn't stay. So that when you drop it, it kills it, and then it's gone. So that it doesn't keep teleporting people. Zone, same thing. Set spawn is a little bit different. It executes at e type of little name equals set spawn. But instead, it sets your spawn point to wherever the block the thing is. So when you drop it, <clears throat> it sets your spawn right there. Now, the last thing before the TPAs is the kill, or the slash home. Now, what I do, since I keep inventory false on the world, is when it drops on the ground, it keeps it changes the game rule to keep inventory true so that you can't lose your stuff. Then it sets a block there to a redstone block so that it can do a couple commands. This sets it back to air. It'll open. Never mind, this doesn't set it back to air yet. This is the main command. So then it'll execute for the same thing, the kill item. Then it'll kill you. And being that the uh, game rule keep inventory is true, you won't lose your stuff. And you'll go back to your spawn point. This one sets the block to air, the one right there. This one sets keep inventory back to false. And this one kills all the things named kill. So for example, set my spawn here, walk over here. I'm gonna kill myself with this thing. Oops, that did not work. Okay, so I forgot that I have it set to kill all set spawns in spawn. So that's why the set spawn wasn't working. 
So now that we're in factions, I can drop it. It'll actually work. I'll walk over here. And I come back here to where I set my spawn. Now the last thing in TPAs, I'll just show you how they work quick. And then I'll show you the command for them. The TP accept is the person that wants to be teleported. The TP request is the person that you're teleporting to. So if you want to teleport to somebody that's standing right here, you just have them drop a request. Then you drop an accept. And you teleport over here. Pretty cool. And the commands for that are right here. TPA. Now I have one for each channel. This is channel 2, this is channel 1. So they're the exact same except for it has a 2 right here instead of a 1. So it executes at E name equals this thing. TP except channel 1. Squiggly, squiggly, squiggly. TP at P range equals 5 to the TP request. And then it just kills both of them yeah. that's it for the video that's all I had um basically just make a spawn make shops just get it all set up make the shops make the currency get the economy all figured out and then all those commands should just do everything for you it's pretty simple just make the factions work and then the hardest part really is just managing all the players everybody if you just trust me when I say this anybody and everybody's gonna want to break the game nobody's not gonna want to cheat if there's a way to cheat there somebody's gonna do it so you just gotta try as hard as you can to make the game unbreakable and I think I've done a pretty good job over the past few months as the server has been progressing and but yeah like I said if you want to join the server I've said in the past videos just friend me on Xbox there's a discord I'll leave in the link below um, don't forget to subscribe, bell notifications, follow me on Twitter, I always post, I mean it's not a automatic notification, but I'll post whenever I upload a new video, and I hope you enjoyed, peace out everybody.